I give you permission. All right, here we go. Good morning. Good morning. I have no control. Yeah, you can go in. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the beginning of the holiest week of our entire year. Today we start with Palm Sunday, and we're going to start out here. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Zion. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. As the people spread their palm branches on the ground to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem, so we welcome him into our lives this morning. King of glory, king of peace, servant king, reign in our hearts and lives that we might pray in his name. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. A reading from Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord will be back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside. In the as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said. And they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve.
may be seated. And at this time, I'd invite the children to continue the procession all the way up to the front here for our children's message. Coming, good. Good morning. Good morning. All right, All right. I, have I have some, some things, things in this bag, bag this morning. morning. You have to sit next to me today. Can you sit next to me? Thank you. Yeah. All, right. All right, can anybody, can anybody tell, tell me, me what, is what is this, this? Charlotte? A life, a life jacket. jacket, and what, what do you use a life jacket for? Yeah. Okay, okay. Sometimes, sometimes people, people who don't know how to, how to swim, swim. Another time we need a life jacket? You have a life jacket at home? Do you wear it so that you can be safe in the water? Yeah. And you have a boat? That's pretty cool, Harley. What is this? Yeah. First aid kit. First aid kit. So if somebody's, somebody's bleeding or somebody's, somebody's hurt, hurt, we can help them. That's good. Also have one of these. Is yeah, we can wear it. Where are they? On our house. That is a good place for it. And what do we use it for? To protect ourselves from germs. And I have one more thing. What is this? Helmet. Where are these? Bike. Can we go. What is it? Yeah. It keeps our heads safe. So all things are things that can help keep us safe. Today we are talking about when Jesus entered Jerusalem. It, Hosanna. Hosanna means save us. What do you hope Jesus will save us from? from some bad people from darkness. Call, save us. That is far from perfect. And we need Jesus and the Holy Spirit's help. So today, to help us remember that, we're going to draw a cross our post, 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 post. And then and we then can we put, put that, that onto our, our uh, cross. cross. So, 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 can you take can a post-it? Post and then we'll get you some, some crayons. All right, All right, so go ahead, go ahead and draw, and draw your, cross, your cross, and then we, and then we can go on the, on paper, the paper, and then, and then we'll, we'll say, say a prayer. prayer.
right, let's do a repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to save us by coming to earth to die on the cross. Be with us as we enter Holy Week and help us remember your love for us. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. It's not quite time for Sunday school yet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. No, Dale. <laughs> Will you pray with me? Holy God, this week especially, we remember the sacrifice that you did for us. Help us to walk with you to the cross before we get into the resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen. Morning. Why don't we rise and praise for this morning? He 
splendor of a king. The splendor of the king. Clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. All the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. In darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice. children have snuck out. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 to 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself. Taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, word of God, word of life. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Thank you, Thomas. The 
the Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Five days before the Passover, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that things had been written of him and had been done to him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. On Palm Sunday, I often find myself wondering which parade I would have been at that day. Because there were two very deliberately planned parades that day. Neither were spontaneous. Both were steeped in important messages. The first parade would have been a spectacle for sure, and I imagine I would have been drawn to that parade. As I've explained before, every year the Roman governor of Judea would come up to Jerusalem from his coastal residence in the west. He wanted, he needed, to be present for the celebration of the Passover. You see, at the Passover, Jerusalem's population went from about 50,000 to over 200,000. Why would the governor want to be there at a Jewish celebration? He would be there to remind them that the Jews could commemorate their ancient victory over Egypt. But, but if they even thought of daring to stage a resistance, as Borg and Crossan describe, the empire would be there. With all its cavalry on horses, foot soldiers, leather armor, helmets, weapons, banners, golden eagles mounted on poles, and sun glinting on metal and gold. The empire would be there with all the sounds of marching of feet, the cracking of leather, the clinking of bridles, the beating of drums, the swirling of dust. This parade was more than just a military threat. It was a reminder that according to the Roman imperial belief, the emperor was not simply the ruler of Rome. He was the son of God. This deliberately planned parade brought a message to the Jews. Don't step out of line. I think it would have been quite the event. Even if I was maybe a bit afraid, it would have been something spectacular, and I'm not sure I would have wanted to miss it. But that wasn't the only parade that day. You see, Jesus had another message, and he made a deliberate plan to deliver it. Starting on the Mount of Olives, which is the traditional place, uh, location which people expected the final battle for Jerusalem's liberation would begin. From there, Jesus begins his final campaign. He's planned the entire occasion in advance. He's carefully made arrangements for this event. He arranged for a cult and even provided signals for the disciples to use for the people who were watching the cult. Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. He was bringing a very different message, a parody of sorts. He plans to enter the city, the city where he knows he's going to die, without weapons of war, not even on a full-grown donkey, but simply a colt. Jesus goes to take possession of Jerusalem unarmed and riding on a nursing animal. As Jesus enters through the back gate, unlike the governor, the people spread branches and cloaks before Jesus as a symbol of honor. In actions that would have been considered treasonous by the empire, they shout praises, Hosanna! Hosanna! Try again. Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We'll practice some more. Hosanna. 
It means God saves, like Rachel told us. Long live the king. I imagine it would have been a good parade, but nothing compared to what was going on at the front gate. Which parade would I have been at? Which parade would you have been at? Power? Humility. Which is more attractive? Which do you seek in a leader? According to Campbell, Jesus' parade sends a different message. Jesus is turning the imperial notions of power and rule on their head like he did his whole ministry. His theater is humorous. It's a piece of political satire. In his triumphant entry, Jesus lampoons the powers that be and their pretensions to glory and dominion, and he enacts an alternative way to their way of domination. Riding on a colt, his feet possibly dragging on the ground, (laughs) Jesus comes not as one who lords his authority over others, but as one who humbly rejects domination. He comes not with pomp and wealth, but as one who's identified with the poor. He comes not as a mighty warrior, but as one who's vulnerable and refuses to rely on violence. And then invites people to see and live in the world in a new way. Which parade would I have been at? I don't know. But I do know that the kind of parade that Jesus planned surely would not win an election. Am I right? (laughs) Jesus' parade, though, shows us the politically subversive nature of gospel, gospel and of our Christian worship. And I think we all know that the subversive nature of the gospel also does not win elections. Suffering does not win elections. And it sure didn't win Jesus any favors either. In fact, I imagine that this specific poking at power directly resulted in his death. So what are the parades we attend today? How do we make sure that we're at the right parade, even when it's not the popular one or the powerful one or one that doesn't get us a seat at the table or one that might actually cause us to lose something? How do we know when we're marching in the right direction, in the direction of the cross? I imagine we know we're marching in the right direction when we look around and we're in the company of others who might just be doing the same thing. I imagine we know we're marching in the right direction when we look around and we see people, those who normally get that suspicious stare or demeaning glances, those who are shamed in the name of order in society, pushed to the outside, those who have been abandoned, those we really don't want to see but would rather judge. I imagine when we are marching with those people, when we march in solidarity with their suffering, when we might actually suffer a little because of it, that is when we know we're marching with Jesus. When we see and feel the pain of the world and choose to march forward in spite of it, when we're humiliated for our efforts of love and grace, I suppose we know we're marching with Jesus to the cross. I don't know if anyone in the crowd that day understood what Jesus was doing. I don't know if they understood the subversive nature of their king's donkey ride. The gospel writers don't tell us. But unlike those who threw their cloaks and branches on the ground for Jesus... We actually know what happens, yes? We know the end. We know that when Jesus enters Jerusalem that time, it will be the last time. This is the road to death. And today, we begin a journey that holds the fullness of all the human story. The highs, the lows, the hopes, the fears. In the span of seven days, that is before us, Thomas points out that we do it all. We praise, we process, break bread, wash feet, 
make promises, break promises, deny, betray, condemn, abandon, grieve, despair, disbelieve, and then celebrate. This week we get to see the grimness of death and then find the day that's drenched in glory. And so today it begins, church. The biggest parade in all of history. Are we ready to march? To march to the cross with Jesus in order to celebrate the resurrection. Can we humbly humble ourselves enough to shout with the crowd, Hosanna, save us now, save us now, Jesus. Amen. pray. Bless these gifts that we have given that all people may know your goodness. Instill in us a hunger for justice and peace. We pray this. Amen. Please rise as you are comfortable as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers.
trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things. Let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with the resurrection hope. Renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. Establish peace and justice among the nations. Hold to any account, any with authority, to judge others. Grant that courts, legislatures, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care that may know your love. We pray for all those who are sick or suffering, especially Dale, John, Bob, Don, Caitlin, Terry, Craig, and Heidi, Marilyn, Debbie, Dolores, June, and Ann. We pray also for those who are recovering, rebuilding, and grieving after severe storms and tornadoes in Ohio, Indiana, Missouri, and Illinois, and for those who are starving, injured, and waiting for aid in Gaza. During Holy Week, give energy and joy to our pastor, worship leaders, office staff, and musicians. Watch over those who travel. grateful hearts we give thanks for all those celebrating birthdays this week, Grace Holtz, those celebrating anniversaries, Dan and Jacqueline McKernan, all those preparing for Holy Week, Cheryl Niffen and Karen Au for bringing soup to dinner church, our administrator of congregational life, Cassandra, and all she does to run this church, and all life's blessings. Mercy. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. It's Holy Week. Don't skip to the end of this year. Last to celebrate, um, the women's Bible study took uh, a meal to Micah 6 a couple Sundays ago. I forgot I had a picture. I wanted to make sure I showed you. And also just because, yes, yes. It has been fun. Um, every Wednesday in Lent, Amelia and Hartley have been at our dinner church. I didn't know that Hartley spoke. Now she doesn't stop talking. <laughs> it's fabulous. It has been a really good time. Our Dialogues on Sexuality takes a break this week for Holy Week. It will return the week following that. We'll take off the 10th because I'll be out and finish up on the 17th. 7 o'clock, same place, same time. This Thursday, do not come here. The door will be locked. The lights will be off. Go to St. John's in Farmington. That is where our Monday Thursday service will be, um, where we will be experiencing the cantata, the Living Last Supper. Thanks to everyone who has been participating and practicing for that, and especially to Dale for all of your work. We'll see you at St. John's on Thursday. Then at Good Friday, join the Conference of Churches at Celebration Lutheran Church in Westland on Joy Road at noon. And then here... We will unlock the doors Friday. You can come on in, 7 o'clock, and we'll have our Good Friday service. 
Easter Sunday will be at the same time as 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock, but with all the special things that the resurrection requires. Because, you know, Jesus doesn't come out until the trumpet plays. D did you know that's the truth? It's the truth. But before Sunday, on Saturday, there's an Easter egg hunt from 1 to 2, um, right here at Emmanuel. There'll be the outside, and then we'll come inside and have some hot dogs and some crafts. So bring your friends, tell your neighbors. Thank you to all of my dinner church people who stuffed 500 on Wednesday. Well done, well done. <laughs> the last Sunday for our emphasis of the month, which is JARC, which is a nonprofit that serves people with developmental disabilities, give generously. And we have just been approved to create a community garden. This is a rendering of what it will look like. Um, Steve Simon, who's a retired landscape designer, is in charge. I mean, right? Like, like I could do that. I couldn't do that. Um, and if you are interested in helping us, we want to make sure you see him. Um, this is a chance for us to, first of all, provide fresh produce for our community cupboard, but then also to donate to other nonprofit organizations who are feeding people in need. So, woohoo! Anybody excited? I'm excited. That's all that matters. <laughs> Continue to update your church track and next slide. We now have a very official way for you to communicate with our treasurer. Uh, you can use this email, treasurer at emmanuel-livonia.org to take care of all your financial needs. So official. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> yes, he'll make you rich. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> I'd invite our council members to come forward for their installation. Plus Bob. All of these lovely people have been elected by the congregation to serve positions of leadership. Will you um, tell us your name and your position on, thank you, you've read my cue, um, position on council. Hello, uh, Mike Finkenbein, second year as church council president. Blame him. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll give him your address. Yeah, that's fine. Kenneth Bowman, I will make you rich. <laughs> Julie, Julie Button, Button secretary. secretary. Judy, Judy Cook, Cook, member at large. Karen, Karen Daler, Daler, member, member at large. large. Uh, Trevor, Trevor Seabolt, I'm, I'm the vice president, president, so if Mike's not around, around blame me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he forgot to not raise his hand. <laughs> we give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. Rejoice now with these siblings who will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You all have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. That's a big job. On behalf of your siblings in Christ, I ask you, Will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, say, I will, and I ask God to help me. 
People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? So say, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will, and we ask God to help us. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. Almighty God, bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace, that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Shall we welcome them? Now get to work. <laughs> and now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share that with one another. You may be seated for the anthem.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On that last night that Jesus spent with his friends, they shared a holy meal. And he encouraged them to share it again and again after he was gone. The meal was given with promises that when you remember me, I will be with you. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so we pray, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, that love might be the motivation for all we do. Let God's people say, amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. To receive communion this morning, we come down the middle aisle and with open hand take the bread and dip it into either the red wine or the white grape juice, which are found in the cups. Gluten-free is available for those who request it. The table is set, all is prepared, and all are welcome. <laughs> I'd invite our technicians and our musicians to come forward along with Thomas. I see a king of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes. I see his love and mercy washing over all our sins. The people sing. The people sing, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. I see.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Please rise as you are comfortable for the final blessing. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Praise is rising. Praise is rising.
Thanks be to God. Here 